February is supposed to be the coldest month of the year but we are right now in the high high 80s can you believe that I'm loving it I'm loving it so much I'm like oh my god if the summers were like this if they turn out to be like this those would be really nice because after being in the cold it's like this is so cold Dark roast. I don't do dark roast. Medium roast. Original. Sounds good. Medium roast. Colombia. Hmm. I'm glad I stopped by to do my my side mirrors. I really, really needed them clean. But the real reason I stopped by was for coffee. Tractor supply is the customer I'm going to, but that's not the entrance. I have to go in the back. The first time I came here, the funny thing is, I saw a sign saying no trucks there, but in front of me there was a uh, a truck that turned in there and I'm like did I just see wrong I followed them and then I realized after following them that uh, I thought the sign just said no trucks in there so we had to both turn around and uh, that made me realize you can never just follow people you can't assume they know what they are doing because I thought oh it's my first time here probably this guy knows what what he's doing maybe I misunderstood the sign it turns out he hadn't I think read the sign he probably didn't know what he was doing luckily enough it's it's a big space and I think that's what kind of like confuses because it's a very big space it looks like it's a truck entrance you kind of just assume if you are not reading the signs just in front of us is amazon we also do bring uh loads there and then just next to where i'm going there is a walmart but i've never come to this particular Walmart so I'm not sure if if we do bring lots there or not because I've never come there so this right here is the right entrance so if 
any of you ever comes to tractor supply in Waco, just know that when you get off the, the freeway, that big entrance is not the entrance. You have to come on the back side. This is my second time here. This morning, I read a story about um, a father and a son. I think that the son's name was Sean. Um, so they were, I think they were going somewhere. I don't remember, was it a game or... They, they, they were doing something, but they stopped by a gas station and then the dad went inside the gas station, I think. I don't know. I think they went with the son inside the gas station. But then the dad gave the son. The son, by the way, was 11 years old. Or oh, let me say is 11 years old. So he gave him the keys and told him to go back to the car. I think maybe to wait for him or something like that. Uh, so while the boy walked back to the car, the dad was watching it. And I think he stopped by and talked to uh, somebody who, that was in a wheelchair, like there was a, a black guy in a wheelchair. And so the son stopped by and talked to him for a few minutes and then went in the car. And then I think after a few minutes, the son walks back to where the guy was and talks to him again. So the dad, the first time the dad saw the guy, I mean, the son talking to the guy, he assumed that the guy was trying to ask his son for money. And so he was kind of not happy with, with the guy saying, uh, I don't remember by the way, I need to double check where. Uh, give me a moment. I remember like, okay, yeah. So, uh, when, when the dad saw the son talking to the guy, he was thinking, this guy is trying to take advantage of my son, he's asking him for money. Because he thought the guy was homeless. And so, when he saw the son go back, to the guy, he's like, oh yeah, I think my son was maybe trying to look for change to give to the guy. And he wasn't really happy about it. So he was like, this guy is taking advantage of young kids. So when he goes to, when he goes back to the vehicle and talks to the son, he tries to ask the, the son, he asks the son, what was that guy telling you? And you know what the son told him? The son is like, oh, nothing. And so the dad is like, but I saw you talk to him. So what was he telling you? I don't know if I'm in the way of anybody. Hopefully not. And so um, the son told him what it was about. And it was that when he went back to talk to the guy, 
he just wanted to know if the guy needed help so it's the son who initiated the talk because this guy was in a wheelchair right and so like where he was it was like kind of like gravel and so the son thought maybe this guy needed help and so he just wanted to see how to help him maybe like push the wheelchair and so the guy um the the guy in the wheelchair was like no i'm fine thank you for asking i'm i'm good and so the dad felt very bad because the dad had thought that the guy you know like maybe is trying to take advantage of of the son yet the son was looking out for the guy uh you know like say uh say seeing that the guy was in a wheelchair he was on in a place that you know like was kind of gravel and so the son wanted to help but the dad thought you know like that uh the dad thought oh this guy is just taking advantage of my son and so it was something where the dad had re uh, he wrote about this saying can you imagine what kids can teach us because here i am as an adult i'm having wrong thoughts and I'm, I'm misjudging the person who needs help but here is a young uh a young guy who sees somebody that needs help So the reason I shared that story with you is because when I was coming in, um, the gentleman that checked me in at the gate, the security guard, uh, I, I gave him my license, right? And then he's like, uh, Kangafe. Uh, and I'm like, yes, sir. And then he's like, what kind of name is that? Uh, his, his question was kind of like, I didn't know what to say. I'm like, what do you mean? What kind of name is like that? Um, then I told him it's an African name. He's like, "Oh, wh where from?" I'm like, "Uganda." And what surprised me was what he told me. He said, "Oh, I I, I used to live in Rwanda." Uh, he's not the kind of person I would have expected to have. Uh, like judging him again, it goes back to that story of how we we judge people by their outside appearance and. Uh, we you know like we make um conclusions or we judge people just by their appearance he's not the kind of gentleman i would have thought has traveled and i don't say that in a, a, a uh, demeaning way but i rarely come across people that have traveled outside the united states most people um they, they just haven't traveled outside the United States. It takes somebody who really enjoys travel or somebody who uh, who has a desire to go somewhere or they are on missions. Most people here haven't really experienced anything outside the United States. So I was kind of surprised by, uh, and I, I just, you know, like remember that story. I'm like, the way we judge people, He's not the gentleman that I would have expected to have uh, traveled outside the United States, but he did. All right, so the time right now is 6.26. I have a pickup in Dallas and then I have a third pickup from the rail my guess is by the time I'm done with both of those it will be time for me to turn in my truck for my sleep seater so looks like I will catch you in the next one Stay blessed.
yeah Driver success, yeah This is driver success Sharing my life, my life It's as real as it gets Keep my faith in my creator He is my navigator So tell me if you ready Cause you know I'm rolling steady A husband, father, Christian and truck driver Telling you my story and the world through my eyes So keep the faith, keep the faith. let's keep it fresh And this is driver success, yeah Let's go.